here and to our virtual space, welcome to you as well. I'm Tiffany Kavarso. And today we're going to talk about our favorite topic, which is metrics. Everyone loves data, right? Ooh, data. <laughs> That's why you're here, because you love data. All right, who here has heard the phrase, a goal without a plan is just a wish? Good, you're familiar with it. Um, it's it's so, so true. You know, we, we think of things that we want to do, whether it's personally or professionally or in our businesses. It's fun to think of goals. I want to do that one day. But if we don't write it down, it just stays in our head. It just stays in the ether. So we need to make a plan around our goals. So our goal for today, for this session, for this one hour, is I want you to identify the KPIs, the things that you're measuring in your businesses that you're already doing. Because chances are you have a really good start on this list. The other goal is I want us to find some things that you can track or measure that you aren't currently doing. And that way you can push your business forward. So that's our goal. We're going to find what you're doing well and we're going to improve on that as, as well. So ask yourself, are you reactive or proactive in your business? I see Billy with the energy. <laughs> are you reactive or proactive in your business? If you're reactive, you're fighting fires constantly. That's where your energy is going. Things are occurring and you're addressing them. If you're proactive, you're able to see further ahead. You're able to plan. You're able to make those goals and, and achieve them. So as we go through this presentation, I want you to think to yourself, man, am I, am I reactive or am I proactive? Our goal is to be proactive. If we're constantly fighting fires, we can't think ahead. We're thinking in the future. <coughs> So this session is all about metrics. It's the things that we are tracking to help push us forward. So what do we know about metrics? What do we say when we mean metrics? Or what do we mean when we say metrics? Data. Data. Measurable, meaningful. Measurable, meaningful data. Yeah, absolutely. This is exactly what we mean by metrics. It's information that we're getting from our environment and using it to help us make plans. Metrics. So why are metrics important? Well, they help us know if we're on track, if we're doing the daily activities that get us from point A to point B. They help us benchmark. I know if we're in line with what the industry is doing locally, regionally, nationally. They help your employees engage. When you have a a goal and it's written down, your employees can see that and say, I'm going to try. It also gives them milestones and markers that they want to work towards. Chances are you are already tracking the common ones that we see are monthly sales goals, um, guests, your first one, returning, got campaign goals. Um, you know, if our inventory is coming over. These are all things that you're probably tracking now. And if you aren't, by the end of this presentation, hopefully you say, ah, I can do that. We have to remember that metrics are not just about tracking dollars. In the end, it kind of relates to that because everything you do in your business affects your bottom line, but it's not just profit and loss. So these are some great examples of metrics that you can track. Um, I would recommend that you take note of some of these. I will also share the deck afterwards. If you just drop your card in the Mindful Solutions box, write KPI on it, I will just be so. So we're looking at things like reviews. Um, we're looking at number of referrals. If our social media messages and comments are being responded to and answered. Data is amazing. It paints a picture for us, but it can also be really dangerous. It's easy to collect lots and lots of data, and then you don't have to do More is not always better when it comes to data. So too much can be harmful. Has anyone here ever 
you, if you said, I want to know what's going on with X, Y, Z. So you collect all the data, you put it into an Excel spreadsheet, and then never look at it again. Yeah. <laughs> I have a whole computer full of spreadsheets that are just numbers. They don't mean anything. If you don't do anything with it, it doesn't mean anything. So how can we get around this? Well, it helps to have a team, your employees or your friends or other people in your full community, to say, what do I need to be tracking? What are you tracking? Make sure you're only measuring things that matter. If it does not affect your bottom line and improve your business, chances are you don't need to fix your very valuable resources of energy and time. Oh. It's been a day of. <laughs> I need a float. <laughs> mindful solutions. Take a moment. Hey, I need to be mindful. And I do appreciate this. I've actually not been in front of people since 2018. Yet. So. <laughs> 2018, I went from um, teaching at a college five days a week to work from home by myself. <laughs> so it's been a it's been a shift. So I appreciate it. Hit it out. All right, so we know what metrics are. We know that it's measurable data. We're gonna narrow this down just a little bit. And we're gonna start talking about KPIs. Has anyone here heard about KPIs? Do you know what KPIs are? A few. Yeah. KPIs are important. They are key performance indicators. These are the pieces of data that tell us if we are successful and if we're going to be successful. They are specific, they are measurable, and they let us know we are on track. So this whole session, we want to talk about how to build KPIs that you can actually use. The great thing about KPIs is they're you're looking at them frequently. So it's not a yearly goal. It's not even a every six months goal. These might be your daily goals, your weekly goals, your quarterly goals, at max. And so you're looking at them often. We can see when we look at our goals frequently, am I on track? Am I where I need to be? Am I better than where I need to be? Yes, we're not going to change anything. Am I on track? Great, we're probably not going to change anything then either. But if you are starting to veer off from meeting your goals, taking that time initially and, and quickly at short intervals is going to help you re redirect much more uh, efficiently. So we talked about data and the fact that we don't want to have a ton of data out there. It's not helpful. So how many KPIs should you have? And if this two to four, I'd say one to four for a major goal or business something. So you know exactly what you're looking at. You don't have 20 different things you're trying to measure. You might have three. Customer service might have three goals. I read this study recently, and it's it's really telling. So there was a group in Germany, and they um, surveyed small and medium-sized businesses of, of different, differing industries, and they asked them, "Are you measuring KPIs? Are you tracking these things?" And half the companies said, no, we have no plan for KPIs in our business. That same survey found that the people, 50% who were tracking KPIs, were twice as likely to live their goals than the group that was not doing it. It's simply a matter of putting the goal down on the board. So these KPIs have to be actionable. <coughs> They're things that we can do. They're impactful, preferably tied to your team. We're looking at them frequently, daily, weekly, monthly, and they're motivating. We want to track things that are keep, going to keep us pushing forward. So every business is different. Yes, you are all floats in our homes, but you're all in different industries. You're all in different regions of the country. Everyone should and does have different KPIs that you're going to be tracking. And that's perfectly fine. And your personal goals are a big take over tracking as well. But all your KPIs need to have are fit in four categories. So the first is they're actionable. 
These are the things that are going to show you clearly what you are doing well and what you need to make improvements on to help your business. So they're tied to an action that you can do or stop. They can be measured. The beauty of data is it doesn't lie. It gives us a clear picture. So if we're looking at the data, we can calculate and interpret very clearly what is going on. We want quantifiable measurements. So what does that mean? That means instead of saying something like, we would love to bring more first-time floaters in. And that's a true statement, right? Everyone probably agrees with that. We'd love to bring in more first-timers. But if we want to make it more quantifiable, measurable, and actionable, we'll say something like this. We have a KPI of we want to book eight new first-timers per month. That's, that's easy to track, right? You know that financially, it will help your business and it'll help your client base if every month you have eight new first-timers coming in, probably, possibly, uh, purchasing a membership and being able to return clients. So let's take August, for example. On day one, you tell your staff, our KPI has reset. We want our eight new first-timers. Well, the first week of the month, you might get a you know, good idea of where you stand. You might have one or two first-timers booking. And that says, you know what? We might make our, our goal. If you're on week three of the month, you only have one or two first-timers booking, you might say, hmm, my KPI is indicating that I'm not going to make this goal. What am I doing? What did I do or not do this month that I've done previously that I need to relook at to make my goal? So it's just very, it's very clear information. Another example, to say, ah, oh, our clients love us. We get really, really great feedback, which is good, but it's not measurable, and it's not actionable, it's not trackable. So we may have a KPI um, around our customers for client satisfaction. Then we can look at results. So instead of saying, love us, we might say, we looked at the data, the surveys we sent out, and 88% of the customers say they would visit us again, which is up from last year, and 82% would recommend us to others, which again is up from last year. So what does that tell us we need to do? Keep doing what we're doing. Absolutely. <laughs> we need to look at last year, but we measured it, look at this year and see what did it change. Maybe it was marketing. Maybe it was a new technology that you introduced. Maybe you got new staff. Maybe you got rid of someone who was not as pleasant and brought an amazing new staff member on. We can look and say, hmm, something changed and it helped us. What was it? And then keep doing that and keep doing more of it. We want to set KPIs that are timely. That means we are looking at data in real time. It is very important to look at old data that was we came from. Okay, that's our starting point. But we want to make sure that when we're creating KPIs, there are things that we can look at frequently and in real time. And these are things that impact our bottom line. So we don't want to waste our time and energy. These are our most important resources, right? Time and energy. We make more money, we can't make more time, we can't make more energy. So we don't want to waste those resources on measuring things that are not going to help us progress our businesses. This is key. KPIs need to be balanced and they need to be strategic. So, oops. In our businesses, we have multiple segments. And when you think of metrics, you think of data, like we said, we tend to um, or people tend to lean towards the financial side of things. Yes, I want to measure uh, the, the money that comes in, money that goes out. Those are very important. But we cannot overlook operations, our customer base, the people in our companies, our external environment, and how we're continuing to improve. So the workshop portion is going to start here in a second. So I want to go through these lists 
And what I want to do um, as a group, hopefully, is I want to start identifying in these each segment what you're doing now and what you could start doing. And I really hope that everyone engages in this because there's a good chance that you're doing something now that could really benefit the person sitting next to you. And you know the ins and outs of your the flow world. I'm on the business side. I don't know the ins and outs that you do. You live and breathe this. So we're going to go through this list and talk briefly about each of those KPI bucket segments. And then I want you to identify what you're doing now and what you can't be doing going forward. So starting with financial, these are the basics. These are your revenues. You know, what money is coming in? Where is it coming from? What money is going out? How are my sales doing? That could be um, you know, single, single float sales, it could be membership sales, it could be inventory sales, um, it could be special event sales that you have. What expenses do you have? And your profit loss. So just I want to take a second, I want you to think through what you currently track. Think through what you are currently keeping tabs on on the financial side that are already in your KPI list. So what are some of those things that you are tracking? Old customers, new customers, repeat customers. Those are all fantastic. And I want you to say that again when we get to the customer bucket. <laughs> Um, total revenue, revenue from memberships, uh, revenue from single sessions, mm -hmm. yeah, employee wages, expenses. Sure. Yeah. Anyone currently tracking those and something else? Or just something else? Revenue per session. Revenue per session? We have a, a first time quarter package which we track. And, uh, yeah. Right. I'm probably just trying to see whether whether those convert to memberships and right. whatnot. Service type. Yes, service type. We track social media efficiency. Oh yeah. Yeah, social media efficiency. That would also fall a little bit later. So bring that one up again too. Okay. <laughs> after saying these, after sharing these, what are some KPIs that you were not currently tracking on the financial side that you'd like to start implementing? You could just one. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that also tells you was it worth it? Was it worth putting all that money and time and energy doing that? For sure. Well, else? Who else has said, you know what, I'm gonna track that now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. And I think you kind of talked about tracking, but um, just the breakdown is the dimension of the social services. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And that will definitely come in the, in the customer side of things, too, right? The financial bucket is kind of like an umbrella. Everything essentially affects your financial bucket. <laughs> Everything we do in business is going to answer the phone. Every single thing you give is going to affect the bottom and affect the finances. Absolutely. And we're doing that by looking at the time we spend with them, you know, and what resources are we putting into our new customer, getting that customer, keeping that customer, and keeping them happy. Yeah, great, great point. Thank you. Uh, Lifetime value. Yeah. Yeah. Lifetime value. Absolutely. Yeah, Lifetime value. Absolutely. Yeah. We tried to back into like a revenue per employee hour. Mm -hmm. Employee is pretty funky, but um, we decided to like pay everybody way more, only have one person there at a time instead of having two people there. Mm -hmm. 
just like an example. Yeah, these are great examples. For those of you who haven't been doing the things that have mentioned, are any of them sticky to my phone? That's a cool idea. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and I, I hope that's the case. All right, let's talk about our external environment now. Our external environment is everything on the outside, how our company is viewed. Um, it's the branding that we put out. The what are some things that you might consider? So if we're looking at our branding, our public awareness, our charities, um, how, we're, how we're being seen, what are some things that you might consider? Okay. I mean, you want to track like any, any brand assets there, that you're going to share the rates. So, we have some branding videos, and we be better at that. We kind of exploit those we're getting, mm -hmm. the reviews. Um, anytime, you're, anytime you're trying to boost like a public awareness, how do you measure that? So, as a rhetorical question, Excellent point. And then you you know if it's working because you ask, you know, you get the data of who's coming in and how do you do you ever ask how did you find us? Yeah, so you might you might see some of those. Yeah, because obviously our program yeah. our brand ambassadors work with people with the teachers and other influential people in the community and yeah. getting better at tracking how many people are coming through their channels. Excellent. If you are not asking your clients who come in, especially the first time, how did you hear about us? How did you find us? What brought you here today? Please start doing that because you need to know where to focus your efforts. If you have 10 people come in and ask 10 of them, well, how did you find us? And seven of them say, oh, I found you on social media, but you're spending all of your money on print ads. You know, you want to refocus what you're doing. So ask them, hey, what brought you here today? It'll, get, it'll paint a really great picture for you. All right, talking about our customers, our clients. Uh, you know, the clients are why your business. You do what you do to help people, right? Do what you do because you love your clients. So we're talking about clients, we're looking at retention. So if someone comes in, do they keep coming back in my retention? Or do they come in once or twice and we never see them again? Are we bringing in new clients? Uh, our membership sales. Uh, are we having first time sales that convert? You know, or is it you know, just uh, onesie, twosie kind of deals? So, what are you currently tracking in regards to your clients? Our sales pipeline of Track every year, all the new fillers, all the initial three purchases or upgrades or three pack, and how many old members, new members, and lost members. You have a great system for tracking your clients. What that sounds like. Um, Google Sheets. Tags of because we do like, follow up call, like all of our first half quarter follow up calls, um, and then do they and remind it because we don't we're pretty soft in the shop, so we follow up and so we can track the tags on the board of the sign that like first call, second call, that voicemail, and move all that data and kind of follow through the whole sales funnel. Have you done that from day one? No. Can you tell the difference from when you started without all of that tracking to now? Yes. Positively, I imagine, right? Yeah. Yeah, because you, you know what's going on with your clients. And we're improving every day. Yeah. This is something I'm you know, actively working on, put a lot of effort into it. Right. It's funny, I was talking to someone else about something totally different, talking about pro process improvement, what we're discussing. And they were saying, man, we want to grow, we want to grow. And I said, that's great. You, you need to stabilize. <laughs> before you can grow. 
so you know a lot of these times you just need to get a good system in place if you want to improve you just you have to identify what's going on that's good and bad and solidify that before you can, can grow so yeah Mantra, you can't grow what you're not, you're not measuring. That's right. You're not measuring hmm. so, That's funny. Yeah, that might come up later. <laughs> Sorry, what's your name? Matt. Matt. Uh, Simon. Um, so, do you do it all by yourself in uh, Pretty much with, um, with some with help from outside help. But yeah. Yeah, that kind of great. I was actually working with a fractional CFL. It's really hard helping me advance that. Yeah. And building better projections up. I mean, no one has like built a good, has an automated CRM for all those kinds of stuff. Yeah. A crazy collection of zaps. Mm -hmm. level Not affordably, at least. Yeah. Why is this so, so much work? I'm learning. I'll tell happen. you why. It has to do with the fact that there are CRMs, and when you export the CSV yeah. or whatever type of data there is, it's not automatically formatted to each individual social media platform. But if anybody out there is using the Helm, I will, just what you said, a script that will automatically take your entire customer list and make it so that you can upload into Facebook ads and Google. And once you guys start doing that, and you can start remarketing, retargeting people, and creating look like audiences, Game changer. You'll see things so different. But again, don't go out there and start spending a bunch of money. But I wanted to mention something about the external environment. I think it's really insightful. It's reviews. Mm -hmm. Huge. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most important things. And as a small business owner, what, you sh what I think you ought to be telling people, is, this is how I say it, it's going to sound ingenuous, but I'm going to tell you. I say, which you did. You loved it. And if you'd like to help us reach others just like you, offer us a review on Facebook or Google is one of the best things that you can do. Yeah. A lot of people are scared. They're like, it's not genuine. It's not genuine. Don't feel that way. Part of the five core principles that we implement is asking for reviews, get your management team reading the reviews, start interacting and responding to reviews. The review system is what establishes trust for the business. And when people see those reviews, they're just like, I have to do this. It's not just a small box. It's not a thing that's going to terrify me and endlessly to the end of the day. And uh, it's for, I think for me, it's going to be ginger. I mean, you know, having reviews, both Facebook and Google, and I just point those two out. But if Yelp is making your region or TripAdvisor, I'm still learning how to figure out how to get people on there, but maybe my group doesn't really like to push that kind yeah. of stuff. That's a great point. Yeah, thank you very much. So we're looking at people. This is our employees. These are the people in our company, and you as well. You're, you know, you're also part of this um, this base. So we're looking at retention. How much time and money are you spending on training? Bringing people in is very important. If you don't train them properly, they're not getting the information they need. They're not telling your clients what they need to know, um, and they're not going to be supported. So there's a lot of KPIs we can build around people. Continuous improvement. Uh, what are you doing in your flow centers? What are you doing with the technology that you're using? Or, you know, I know that things trend, and they, they get popular for a while and they fall off, but are you always looking at what's going on in your industry and trying to continuously improve? We don't want to stagnate. And then with operations, we're looking at technology, uh, definitely looking at CRMs, looking at customer management services, we're looking at um, you know, all the tools that are out there. You mentioned Asana, many companies really like. Um, there's registration systems, the technology is constantly changing. So, are your processes and the technology that you're using a hindrance? Are they hindrance? Are they helping? I really want the big takeaway is data is fantastic. You need to be collecting it. What you're collecting, because you don't want to waste your time and energy. If you have KPIs that you said, oh, I really want to track this, you're not using reports. It's not. Uh, 
frequently or looked at frequently, drop it. They're not set in stone. You know, you might say, I really want to look at these different things at the next quarter, but you're really only trying to create the time. Keep those things, drop traditional set, find something else to put in their place. I'll send you these slides. If you have any questions, but the final, final takeaway is as your text done. I gotta be honest. There you go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to do the topic of that. But what gets you want to make sure that your goals are being met, if you want to make sure that the tasks that you set for you are being accomplished, you need to write them down. Okay. If you want the slide deck, um, you will just put it in the link here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll email these out. Yeah, that'll work. Um, so that's, that's all that I have at this time. Thank you.